Hey everyone and welcome to the Thy Worm Weekly Roundup, where I dump all the things I learned, all the games I played and some other noteworthy stuff in a single video. Starting with Pagan Online, they released their fourth hotfix after launch, which addressed the control support, the co-op bug fix and some quality of life loot changes. Playing Pagan Online with a controller is something that I really can't recommend and this patch hasn't changed my opinion. Control support is simply very poorly implemented, controls are clunky and some abilities simply can't be targeted properly, like King Witch Stomp or similar abilities that require you to hover the cursor to a location and then click the ability button indicating that that is the place you want to jump to. The patch did improve somewhat the looting. By pressing down on the d-pad this loot menu pops up that lets you scroll through the loot using the thumbsticks. Unfortunately it didn't take my loot filter into account when activating this loot menu so I still had to manually scroll through each item on the floor. Should be fun this loot menu in the gauntlet. The biggest issue with controller support is that Madhead is trying to have you control a cursor using a controller and you can't do that. It doesn't work like that, a controller is not a mouse. Have you ever seen a console game that wasn't a PC port that had a cursor? No, of course not. Controller support is something that they want to spend time on apparently and the only reason I can think of is future release on consoles. Because 100% of the current player base has a mouse and keyboard so surely they're not doing it for that, right? But if this controller support thing is serious, and apparently it is, Madhead really needs to step up their game. If this needs to work, they need to redesign the entire UI and the way you interact with it, including combat and looting. So I can actually select a mission using buttons on my controller, like LB to swap menus, up and down to move through missions, and A to actually select something. Instead, look at me struggling here with my controller. Controller support 2.0 is not what I would have named this one, but maybe they swapped the digits in their press release. There are changes to the loot filter as well and the auto pick options. Items like crafting materials and gold should now show up and auto loot regardless of loot filter and auto loot settings. At least that's what this sentence seems to imply, right? Unfortunately, also this doesn't work. I tried multiple settings, but gold and other materials are still filtered if I don't enable a base items. The infamous co bug seems to be fixed. I couldn't really test that myself, but I haven't seen the co bug report in the last week trying to end on a high note here. Last Epoch started teasing a bunch of new features for patch 0.7.4. There's no release date yet, but already we got a pretty good idea of what's in that patch. For example, a rework on the soul cages, which get a very nice graphical overhaul as you can see in these two clips. It's more true to the original artwork than the current implementation. The tooltips get an overhaul. The current iteration is clunky and requires you to do a lot of reading. Especially for new players, it is a lot to take in with almost endless combinations of suffixes and affixes. This new tooltip should help a lot in this regard. It provides a nice overview and is a lot easier to digest. Minion stances are going to be a thing as well in Last Epoch. Minion behavior can soon be customized, allowing your minions to either be aggressive, defensive or default. Depending on your build, you may want either of those. When playing a necromancer, I really enjoyed my rogue skeletons to cause mayhem two screens away with me arriving at the crime scene bit later. They nerfed that behavior, or at least it wasn't intended, but now they're bringing it back like this, and I think it's an excellent idea and honestly a pleasant surprise. Volson, Lords of Mayhem, released another update. It's not a game I play, but if you're interested, let me suggest Vulcan on YouTube. He's covering all sorts of action and MMORPGs, but his main game used to be Volson. He's got really good and informative videos, and it's a channel worth watching. He has a video on Volson's latest patch show showing off some of the new abilities. I'll link his channel in the description down below. I got my hands on Encased, a sci-fi post-apocalyptic turn-based action RPG thanks to the devs providing me a key. It is inspired by games like the original Fallout and Wasteland, so that should give you a decent idea about this. And on October 17th they celebrated their one year anniversary on Early Access. I played the game all day yesterday and it's a really fun and interesting game. I used to play games like these so much, in the era where Baldur's Gate and Neverwinter Nights were still a thing, but this brings back memories, good memories. 
The game is so far pretty amazing. The price point of 25 euros is a bit steep for some, but you could consider it. I will be doing a first impressions after I've played some more, so stay tuned for that. Children of Morta, that's a game you should definitely pick up by the way, got their release now on consoles. It's available on Xbox One and PS4 with the Switch coming in November. This game has gotten so much critical acclaim since it launched and even Jim Sterling publishing a very kind and heartwarming video about how much he loved this game. It's well deserved. It's a gem this one and absolutely worth a buy if you like roguelites, indie games and action RPGs. Warhammer Chaosbane is currently free to play on Steam for the weekend. I played a couple of hours as the Elven Hunter but still can't force myself to play this really. I refunded the game at launch and I personally don't see much reason to keep playing but I wanted to give the game another chance. The main issue I have is that it's just not fun. It's very repetitive, the story isn't interesting, the map design is horrible and the voice acting is horrendous. However, don't just trust my opinion on this. You can try it out for free and see if Steam reviews are right or if IGN actually delivered a decent review for a change. Maybe it scratches that Warhammer action RPG itch for you. Also, you can finish the entire game in about 8 hours according to the reviews, so you can use the free weekend to complete the entire game. I don't think anyone missed this one, but Destiny 2 got released on Steam and I've been playing it for around 29 hours. Streamed some of it, but also just grinded and watched some streams. It's still a very polished game, it has amazing guns. Play. There's a ton of stuff to do and it's all free. Only Forsaken and the latest expansion are pay to DLCs, but everything else is free. I haven't paid a dime yet and there's so much content to explore, especially for new players. It's a great time to get started with this. The opinions from the veterans of the game are a bit mixed, but I give Bungie the benefit of the doubt here since they untangled themselves from Blizzard Activision. Let's see what the future brings, but the current state of the game definitely has me thinking about getting additional expansions. More free games I played, this time in the form of a Dungeon Master game. Legend of Keepers Prologue is a free downloadable demo for the full game that's to be released at a later date. It's a Dungeon Master roguelite crossover and while pretty simplistic in its design and mechanics, I still had a good few hours with this game. The funny thing is that it's your job to stop the heroes that come to raid your dungeon where you reside as the bad guy. Normally it's the other way around. To do that, you can place traps and minions in the planning phase. After this phase ends, you can participate in the turn-based combat as well. It lacks depth and some balance because most minions get one shot and the heroes always start first, putting you at a big disadvantage but overall I had a good time and this game has some potential depending on how much they improve and how much they charge for the final product. Finally I want to bring Noita to your attention. This cute little indie game is absolutely amazing. You're this witch and by using very simple controls you need to descend into the depths with nothing else but some spells and your levitation device. I play a few games every day, I die every time but I'm having so much fun each time it happens. The game has its own physics model which does some extremely impressive things by the way. Everything is procedurally generated and feels fresh constantly. I got already 10 hours into the game and if you like what you see over here go and pick it up. It's just really good, trust me. And that's the end of this first weekly roundup that might become more like a bi-weekly thing but we'll see. Let me know guys if you like this. Thanks for watching and making it to the end. Subscribe to the channel. I love you all. Uh, we'll see you soon. Bye bye.